welcome back to the channel. This is just a short video on changing the rear um, brake pads on Royal Enf Enfield Himalayan using just the trail tools that I carry with me all the time and uh, in order that I make sure that I've always got the right tools and the right sizes and everything with me. So it's possible to uh, do this brake pad without uh, without removing the caliper, but it's not ideal because you want to get in there, especially if there's been a lot of salt on the road, like the house around here recently, and make sure that you get everything out, cleaned up, make sure the pistons are moving smoothly. So I'm going to get the wheel off. First job is to um, loosen the chain a bit so that the wheel comes off more easily. So you need a, a 12 mil spanner on on there and a way of holding the other nut, for which I will use my favorite tool for everything. Um, but obviously I don't want to damage the mole grip, so I'm gonna clamp it quite far down the mole grip here, not near the tip where it can, might bend them. There we go, just, that's just clipped on. There we go. Just unclip that. Back the outer one off a bit and then same on the other side. And then just, I'm going to do uh, three full turns, so half, one, it doesn't matter how many you do really, but what you want to do is not, is kind of try and keep them the same on both sides to keep your wheel lined up. Half, one, half, two, half, two, and a half, three, and a half, three. Now we've got to loosen the wheel. Again, this is just using my trail tools, some of which came as part of the standard stuff that comes with the Hemi. All right, so got the nut flush roughly with the, uh, the end of the bolt, the axle bolt, and uh, just back of the hill, boom loosen it off and then hopefully you can spin it like that. You might have to put something, I'm going to put this into the bolt on the other side to uh, stop it spinning. Put those to one side, make sure not to lose them and then start to wiggle it and pull it. Now there's a spacer in there that's going to drop and that's all right. Put my feet under there. Out. There we go, the spacer just fell out. I don't want to lose that. There we go, now the wheel's free to come out. I'm just going to undo the little, the little clip. <laughs> Nearly lost it. Now you might have to uh, use a hammer with a centre punch just to push that out. It depends. I've had this out recently, so I'm hoping. Nope. All right, and that's freed that. No, it hasn't. There we go. That's free now. Pads can come out. They're still all right, but um, they're pretty close to the legal limit, and I want to replace them anyway. Okay, so this question of giving it a good clean up inside. Getting any 
getting so off from the winter roads in this country. I know not all countries use salt, but we just happen to have a lot of it under the ground in this country, so we chuck it all over the roads and corrode all our vehicles, probably much to the pleasure of vehicle manufacturers, because they get to sell more vehicles when the old ones go all rusty. Right, separate out the caliper. Now, these sliders here just need a little bit of uh, rubber grease on them. And what that does is it stops. It makes sure that the, uh, the whole unit slides from side to side so that you don't get uneven wear on one side of the brake pads compared to the other, because the whole thing can move easily. You don't need a lot of rubber grease. It's got to be rubber grease so that you don't corrode away the rubber um, that this sits on. Okay, this is not a trail tool, but I don't know what else to do to get the darn thing to shift. There we go, it's started to move now, once it moves it should be alright. Inside there now, I can get to it a bit better. All right, so the pads that I'm going to use are these. They're FA2O8R, and I've gone for these on the back because although they're not sharp braking as the uh, as the front ones, I figured I don't don't need that, and these are longer lasting. I don't need that on the back because um, the back the back brake seems fine. It doesn't need the upgrade that the front brake needs. Make sure my hands are clear from grease before handling those. Do I get grease on the pads? Tiny amount of grease on there. Just to make everything work well. Get the grease off my fingers. So pop these on one at a time. Knock that in. There we go, that's through. I can see the hole. So I can put the little pin back in, just make sure it's clean. Give it a bit of a clean up. It's alright actually, it's pretty clean. Now it's a question of assembling everything back together. I'm going to put a bit more of that rubber glue, rubber stuff. Rubber grease, not glue. Don't want to do that. That'd be bad. Rubber glue on there. Rubber grease on there. Rubber grease on there. You have to make sure the pads are properly. Um, clicked into the caliper before you start trying to put the wheel in. Now hopefully the wheel will just roll in. Sprocket back in, just fell out. Okay, so when when putting these brake pads in, um, the thing to do is to put the first one in place um, and then make sure that it's properly sitting in the slot at the other end and then the, then then the, then you can move the whole unit uh, relative to the to it, to its uh, mounting chassis thing um, to get the other one bedded in but it's a question of doing it one at a time and getting it to a point where they're both uh, they're both properly properly fixed in so that it doesn't cause um, so, so that they're not bound or caught at an angle or um, or falling out, so there's just a slot that each of them has to sit in. But you've got to get the first one in, move move the chassis across, and then get the second one in, and then move the chassis across a bit further, or move it back. I can't remember. Okay. I 
I'm going to clean the uh, shaft and grease it. Shafting. Why we've got to put the spacer on. Right. Don't push the shaft in too far. So we need to get the spacer on. Need to get the spacer in there. Don't know if you can see that. Need to get the spacer in there now. Nope. Need to get the spacer in. Spike at the bottom. It went all the way into the space actually. Probably, maybe. Just line up the chain tension on that side. Hopefully, lift the wheel a bit. And it should. Oh, come on. There we go. And it's through. Now it's a question of. Uh, Washer, nut, shove the wheel as far forward as we can. At this point sometimes you have to loosen up the uh, chain tensions a bit. We'll see how it goes. Just roll it on. Okay. Beautiful. Now I'm just going to uh, pump the brake a few times. Seems to be working. I'll tighten everything up. I'm not going to tighten up this nut fully and just get it so, it so it's in position. Kick the wheel forward. Now what I've done with the wheel spanner thing here is I've put some 10 millimeter marks. So this obviously is meant to be 25 millimeter of movement. Just get it so you can see, which is going to be a lot more because I haven't tensioned it yet. So that's just completely loose. It's a question of tightening that up, tighten up the inner bolt. So I'm going to do, it's going to be roughly three whole turns, half, one, around the other side, half, one, half, two, half, two, half, three, half, th three, 
Now that's roughly where it was before, but my experience tells me that it doesn't necessarily mean that the tension's going to be right. It's a bit noisy. Ah, uh, it's just my uh, chain loop thing getting caught. There we go. Let's have a look and see. Put that here. So that's like between those two, so that's 10. 20, 25, so that's spot on. 25, rotate it to different parts of the wheel. So that's 30, 25 to 30 is what it's meant to be, so that's good. 25, 25, 25, and just keep going all the way around like that to make sure there's no tight spots. 25, So I think we're good. So now it's a question of just on both sides tightening up the uh, the outer nut. Taking care not to move the inner nut. And then I'll retest the chain tension afterwards. There you go. Extra lesson on how to, how to tension your chain whilst after you take your back wheel off you need to do that. There we go. Alright, so you've got to put something in the hole on the other side to stop that side turning. Tighten this side. Stick the extension on it. And get it properly tight. So it doesn't move. Change it. Change your chain tension. And then just a question of retightening, checking the tightness of the chain. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So all there is to do now is uh, take it for a test ride and just break those brakes in and gently take it easy at first and only break in where it's not critical to start with and just bed them in. All right.